Badminton is a very popular sport in India. Not many know, but it is the second most played sport in India after cricket. This is backed by the fact that India has won uh, 79 medals across all major athletic events such as Olympic Games, Commonwealth Games, Asian Games and many others. Needless to say, we are proud as a nation. In today's episode, we are joined by one of India's prominent shuttlers and an ultra-human athlete, H.S. Pranoy. H.S. is fresh from winning the gold at the Thomas Cup, the first gold for India in the Cup ever, and India having won three bronze medals previously overall. We ask H.S. how he ended up pursuing badminton and his life journey. We then delve deep to find out and understand what goes into the preparation to win gold at a major badminton tournament, some of the core aspects such as nutrition, which is ever so evolving, and how H.S. has worked on his diets over time. He also shares the modern recovery, longevity and training protocols in badminton and how these aspects differ from other sports. Having been an ultra-human athlete and used the M1 CGM extensively, just outlines how tracking a biomarker such as blood glucose helped him optimize his preparation. He also mentions what he wants to see in sports tech and the biomarkers athletes can use to optimize their performance. Lastly, HS lets us in on his next target and shares the three essential tips to take up badminton professionally. This is not to be missed. Let's get right into it. HS, such a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Thank you, Mohit. It's been, it's been a while since I saw you, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> no, likewise. And I think uh, I do cherish the moment uh, when you visited the office. But uh, I just wanted to begin this by asking you, Thomas Cup, how does it feel? <laughs> <laughs> it's, been, it's been a month, but I, I feel it was one of those days which, which we thought uh, that it would never happen in the Indian badminton, especially in the men's side. And, all of a sudden, it happened in Thailand last month. And I should say it was one of those moments in my badminton career, which which I always wanted to say, say to be a part of. And because it's very, it's very tough to be in a Thomas Cup squad, first of all. Uh, you have to be in the best 10 of the country. And, and to be, not just to be a part of the best 10, but to go out there and to win the Thomas Cup, I think it was just a dream for all of us because we thought that initially that uh, we have a chance to get a medal. I think we seriously believe that that we could actually get one medal uh, back for India, but we never thought that it would be gold. And uh, and once once we finished that last match, that last point uh, when Srikanth finished of that game, then 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 we realized how big this this event could be in all of our lives and i think until then it was still a doubtful saying that will it be a big big moment for all of us but then once that happened and then we then then we realized how big it was for the entire nation and uh, i think it was something else <laughs> i saw some snippets of the celebration that happened uh, and uh, it reminded me like it was such a burst of energy almost unbelievable right i mean, was yeah. it 40 years? Uh, I think. After no, I think uh, more than uh, 73 years. Because the last time when uh, when the men's team played the Thomas Cup semi-final was, I'm not really sure, it was 40 years back, as you said. But that time there was no medal given for semi-final. So, so apparently if you see a medal coming uh, for the Thomas Cup, it eventually came after 73 years. So, yeah. <laughs> Phenomenal. I think this... <laughs> This is one of the, I think, probably one of the moments that defines, I think, not just the sporting uh, future of the country, but also like anybody and everybody who talks about the sport, people who are like early in their career thinking about what to what to play and how to shape their career. I think this is yeah, yeah. the ripple effects of this is like, I mean, across generations and uh, of course, across millions of people especially in a country like india uh, yeah i think um, exactly as you said um, uh, we need these kind of moments we, right. because i think post neeraj's gold i think uh, this was the next one which gave that big boost to the entire ecosystem of uh, the sport uh, in, in in our country i should say because uh, not just badminton i would say i think post neeraj's uh, um, so i remember uh, during uh, the olympics uh, when Neeraj won that gold, uh, I think it was not just 
the say the athletic side which which actually got the big boost it i think to the entire indian ecosystem of sports you just give that extra belief saying that okay this is possible so yeah. so something like these kind of events need to happen in a very frequent manner and i felt post the post neeraj's uh, victory i think this this was the next big thing which just came from nowhere where nobody was expecting us to go out there and win a gold in thomas cup and it came uh, and i think not just for badminton i could see say this kind of events give big time motivations to the entire athletes out there saying that if these guys can do it then we can also do it at the big stage yeah this this looks straight out of a movie right i mean with <laughs> all these The we want this to be a movie <laughs> <laughs> absolutely i think this is this is definitely the stuff for movies and um, as i said like this is generational right this will shape the next few generations and yeah. give people so much more confidence i mean it's just uh, it's not a 20% increase 30% increase this is like one of those days in which the indian badminton scene actually moved across decades yeah because personally if you ask me also i even i could feel that uh, sense of energy when i came back to hyderabad when i when i was in right. the last one month of training uh, you can just feel that extra bit of energy in not just the players but the entire support staff as such because everybody is just so thrilled to be a part of this especially the thomas cup and suddenly you have that belief saying that okay this is something huge which happened and uh, the next step is to make it consistently happen uh, every single time you go out there you need those big titles so i think that kind of an energy i can i can already feel when i'm training in hyderabad so i can imagine what's that kind of energy when you see the other academies or the kids playing out there uh, i think that's that's phenomenal i would say which uh, from our side when when we played the finals also I, i i remember saying the same dialogue saying this is not for us this is for the next generations to believe that something of this kind can happen and right. uh, you just need to believe and uh, yeah let's do a little bit of um, a back work into the story yeah uh, let's, <laughs> let's find uh, like what really happened how how did you get here and uh, just a little bit about your background and your life's story a uh, life story i think it started in kerala and uh, i am i am i am from kerala from trivandrum a very small city out there but then i remember when i started playing i started playing at around 10 uh, my dad used to play a lot of badminton he was crazy fan kind of a thing but he used to play a lot of badminton a lot of outdoor badminton i remember where insane crowd used to come for outdoor badminton uh, more than indoor badminton outdoor badminton was famous back days and wow. i think that gave a lot of spark not spark but then that kind of gives you a feeling saying that okay this is a big sport <laughs> even yeah. though you don't know much about it but that gave uh, the start i started playing uh, initially when i started uh, seeing my dad and he only trained me for quite some time i had couple of my coaches i had few coaches out there in trivandrum who taught me the basics but until 16 my dad only used to uh, make me train and and i was decent i was okay i mean uh, in the national circuit i was not big uh, i used to go out there and lose in the second round third rounds but say in the state i was uh, in the one twos so uh, it was a mixed decision when i came to 10th should i continue playing sport because say financially it was really tough um, that mean being a very expensive sport it was tough for my parents but i'm glad that uh, they they told me okay we'll give you two years time you can go out there and explore how much you can do in badminton uh, if you feel it's good then we can we can think about it so that kind of a decision they took at that point of time and uh, luckily that's when i came to hyderabad and started being in the national camps for the initial few years performance started coming luckily uh, in those two years so my parents were still okay and uh, i think to probably get a job in ongc was very turning point i would say because to get something which the parents would think that okay this guy is safe uh, in his career was very important i would say and i think that was the turning point in 2010 uh, 2009 2010 2009 where i was playing at the junior level as pretty decent but uh, getting a job in ongc made it much easier for me to just focus on the game and yeah i think from 2010 it's been a journey lots of downs i would say and less ups but uh, i think um, I'm really glad that 
in the last one decade of my badminton um, i think i have had enough experiences of uh, playing at the top level badminton and um, i never thought i would have played against a lot of players in my career um, i used to watch them on tv just used to sit and enjoy uh, how they used to play but uh, eventually i got to play against them and to beat them i think those are the moments which you will uh, cherish for your entire lifetime yeah wow i remember when you you visited us uh, at the office uh, at the ultra human office i think one of the things that uh, stuck with me was you mentioned that and we were talking about like how do you see your strengths right some of the core strength and you said like oh i i think i am very very strong because i grew up on uh, stew uh, and appam basically <laughs> beef stew and appam <laughs> yes yeah, beef stew and appam <laughs> So yeah. uh tell me a little bit about that like uh, the the journey around food a little bit about uh h- how do you see food and nutrition for yourself as an athlete Yeah I think food was really messed up <laughs> until the last few years <laughs> but being from Kerala I think a lot of things had helped also as I said my mom was totally into non-veg category and very less into vegetarian side so i think almost all the meals we used to have uh, non-veg and, uh, and so that gave a lot of uh, benefits also but say the side effects was there was no veg in your plate uh, any time and uh, it took a lot of time for my parents to really include those veggies in the plate and because they also realized later that uh, okay so veggies are the main thing and not say the non veg so so i remember uh, back days uh, my grandmother uh, especially my mom's mother uh, was a really great cook and more than being at home i used to be at their house and uh, i used to only go for lunch and stay there until dinner and used to have dinner and come because i remember st- i still still remember having fish fries over there because she used to fry fish in this much of oil and i just used to love <laughs> that much that much oil being used for that fish because you just can get the entire taste of that fish when you when when you're cooking in those style and you know how old people kind of cooks their food so i remember being being at my grandma's place more than at my place and enjoying these kind of food and and later on when when i started to shift to hyderabad that's where things were really tough for me and uh, the food just was entirely different over here and it took a lot of time it took good 3 4 years and we were eating in academy and there was no proper way of nutrition which which was in place and but i think in 2018 that's where the big change happened where i had a big gut issue and uh, uh, things were really really bad and that's where i started to dig deep into this and uh, really understood that okay how important i need to really figure out the food for me because at the end of the day i just wanted to play and if i wanted to play i just had to eat well and and then i started to really read about people who have been in this sport and been playing at the highest level and uh, uh, and their diet plans and i think all those things came into perspective i think joko which was a big example at that point of time all those things gave me a big perspective of saying that okay this is the next big step towards say getting into better rankings or playing well because i knew i was say in 2017 2018 i was 25 26 but i knew the next 4 5 years i'm going to get old and things are going to be even more tough so i just need to get things sorted right now and uh, Yes, I think from 2018 it's been a new journey I would say. Still I'm not really great in controlling a lot of uh, desires but uh, especially in the food side but I'm still trying to control as much as possible and now I realize how important it is to be disciplined in the food which has eventually given me a lot of good results in the last few months. So I hope we can continue the journey for the next 5 6 years too. <laughs> No, and absolutely. probably take a break post that and then 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 again start <laughs> this is an ongoing journey and i think yeah. as you rightly mentioned uh, jokovic nadal uh, i think the average age of an athlete has actually increased increased yeah uh, significantly right i think over the last few years last few decades to be honest yeah what i hear is that it's almost reached around 43 years now the average age of an yeah. retiring athlete and uh, yeah, yeah. this is phenomenal because it's not just only about uh, the success rate 
but also the length of success right to some extent like how for how many number of years can you keep winning that changes the paradigm to some extent like totally yeah now totally. become like multi dimensional chess you have you just don't have to win you have to keep yeah. winning keep and, winning yeah yeah and keep winning as you're aging so yeah, it, yeah. it gets <laughs> as you mentioned uh, when you're 25 uh, whatever you do actually works for you it actually um, works for you yeah you don't have to really think twice about do uh, right. when you're doing anything but then when you're 27 28 it starts to hit you slowly and when you are getting to 30s then it's then you know okay, this is it then you know okay, yeah. this is say this is it i, I remember in 20, when when you were 24 25 you sleep at 4 am then you get up at 8 am also you are still okay yeah but nowadays if you sleep at 12 and then if you get up at 7 also you are not okay i mean uh, yeah. i mean that that kind of a change i can i can totally uh, experience i mean i've 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 experienced in the last few years and i've i've been telling the juniors also over here saying that take things a little bit more seriously because things are going to change drastically in the next couple of years and then then it would be really tough to 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 really catch up and the players who are going to do it straight away right now they will have an advantage straight away when they reach 28 or 29 well this is like the some of the most <laughs> prolific sports scientists in the world when we speak to them and when we try to understand like which is what is the bare minimum or the lowest hanging fruit of what one should be doing and unanimously the answer has been yes you can't out on a bad diet that's known but you can't definitely out on a bad sleep routine yeah so it's yeah. like uh, yeah. sleep just compounds and catches over and and you yeah. can't really fix it by getting fix more sleep later more sleep <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly yeah. this is one thing which which kind of bothers me because we have a lot of travel which comes with this sport and and the flight timings are all 3 am 2 am 1 am and uh, i mean all these kind of odd hours which which you don't want to fly but then there is no option and uh, right. then you are trying to catch up your sleep during the tournaments but eventually as you said that fatigue keeps building and uh, you just can't avoid that uh, any time and i think the only answer for it is to to have enough sleep and to recover and uh, i think uh, right now the last few years i've seen a tremendous change in my in my recovery when 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 i have started to monitor sleep food and other parameters and i can see a lot of pains just vanishing away before before i used to get a lot of niggles and uh, okay. and especially after heavy sessions you you feel that you're not ready for the next day already yeah, but yeah. Uh, i think in the in the last few months and last few years i've i've I felt much better I would say I've been able to recover much better and I've not been doing anything say in the recovery process I'm not doing anything else rather than just to stick with good good diet and and to sleep uh, better so I think that just making things much easier I would say No I think this is uh, very very topical because I uh, just uh, today morning I was speaking to a fellow founder who's actually working in the uh, travel recovery space so that's really interesting for athletes so mm-hmm, the biggest mm-hmm, problem mm-hmm. is that when we design protocols together for athletes and athletes themselves design the protocols themselves the assumption is always a steady state that oh you have your routine and this is how the routine works but everything is out of the window when there is travel right? travel yeah <laughs> yeah so uh, there's a lot of uh, emf exposure there's a lot of dehydration issues there's but obviously food is a huge issue uh, lack of sleep lack of recovery so th- so this person i would love to introduce you to the company and we could we could definitely set up a partnership post post this yeah. is that uh, yeah. they are actually building a line of um, you can say hoodies or t-shirts that actually are uh, you can say more recovery friendly so they have more like, recovery like, friendly okay it essentially uh, blocks emf radiation and uh, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. It makes you less dehydrated while you're traveling etc etc mm. Mm-hmm. so uh, yeah yeah so th- i think uh, a lot of work happening in this space yeah because uh, sport sports is just evolving and you just have to find ways to get better and better and better because everybody is trying hard but it just how much you how much you are doing things in a different ways that will that will eventually make you a champion and i think it's straight away an answer uh, right there where who are those extra and have been doing this kind of stuff they only eventually go out there and win an olympic gold and nobody who yeah. is just a normal candidate can just go out there and win an olympic gold so i think in the next 5 to 6 years i think this space is going to get even more competitive where people are going to come with a lot of new stuff so that you are recovering well and and at the end of the day it just recovering well 
and yeah. uh, how much ever you train how smart you train if you are uh, not able to recover well then i i don't think anybody can sustain the longevity and uh, you you just can't uh, get that quality of sessions back to back and every day and that consistency would keep dropping if you don't have that much of uh, recovery happening so at the end, i think at the end of the day it's all about recovery and what all things you can do so that you are fresh for the next day's practice or for the matches so yeah the last 1% right that that really yeah, matters yeah. recovery is a core yeah. piece of how health actually works we are cells are sort of like working on very very soon actually launching a data product in this space basically where you can mm. actually look at bunch of your biomarkers and uh, especially the recovery once in one in one place and correlated with glucose and, and that said i would love to understand your experience with uh, the glucose biomarker as well i i recollect that like if i look at your sort of like a nutritional journey you mentioned that a big you can say change happened change, in 2018 yeah. Um, yeah, and yeah. it was gastroesophageal reflux yeah. if i'm not wrong jord yeah 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 jord yeah, yeah. jord so and that's i mean usually for a lot of people that's actually quite common uh, yeah but i think for what what happens is for an athlete that's actually very very like it's it's not preferable right because i mean first of all you're traveling and you have these schedules etc yeah so yeah. F- from that perspective to now looking at glucose monitoring or tracking your nutrition um tell me a little bit about some your experience with some of these things and uh, how do you expect these things to evolve as well in the future well i think uh, the first thing which i would uh, say is when you are playing at the highest level i think uh, uh, any sport the differences are very 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 marginal and uh, uh, i think the amount of work everybody is doing might be very similar uh, but the things which you do off court is uh, is the real uh, stuff which actually makes that big difference on court where how much tournaments you are able to play at the highest level all these kind of parameters gets to you on that level and how much time you are able to be injury free athlete and that's right. a big factor coming in right. so i think for me post 2018 post the diet change and post the diet plan i've been trying to slowly get things sorted for me because i've realized that this, this is not a thing which which as an individual i can do alone i need right. a group of people to help me to monitor what my body is and what i can get best out of it and i think that's when i started working with a group of people say with the nutrition side and when the ultra human came in it became very very easy for me to really correlate what's happening and especially on the tournament days i can see my sleep going for a toss that is one thing which i have been we have been trying to work uh, as a team to see how we can change things i think that's the next step for me to see how much i can get better sleep during the tournament especially when it comes to quarter final semi finals then i'm really anxious not anxious but i'm really excited to go out there and play again so so my sleep is entirely gone for a toss so these kind of parameters uh, especially when it came to ultra human and say the glucose levels when you're monitoring the glucose levels you can you can clearly see as especially with the food i would say i was eating much earlier than before because i have realized that eating late and then sl- getting to the sleep have freely hampered my sleep cycles so these kind of small small changes i have been able to do post ultra human and uh, when there is a team continuously monitoring you uh, that that gives always an extra edge whenever you are going off the track you you straight away you get a call saying that see you're going off the track you need to be on the track and these kind of things is very important when you're playing at the highest level because you just yeah. can't go off the radar and so that is where i felt ultra human comes very very handy especially for high performance when you're looking at high performance and for the high performance as i said it's consistency and consistency is the key so um, so yeah i think in the next 4 5 years there are going to be a lot of uh, new things which are going to come in place i'm sure because you're slowly getting into this space and so a lot of new ideas comes in when you are into this totally and as i said now i am totally looking how i can improve my sleep on a quarter finals or a semi final day and probably that might be the turning point of my career where one two matches here and there you you eventually figure out what needs to be done then you're sorted and you eventually go out there and win 
couple of big tournaments and then things start to flow so these are the few changes which i think everybody have to do in their uh, regime uh, not just me i think um, the who are playing at that highest level there might be these kind of very very small stuff which is why you are kind of behind certain players if you do those big steps and if you're if you're ready to try this out then you never know you might really improve um, the big time what would be the next big st- jump for you like what would you like to see maybe your wish list like oh this is and it might not be completely related to what we do but um, would love to take a shot at it <laughs> it's a tough question but uh, see when i always remember saying that how technology has been just going way beyond our calculations i would say because back in 2010 2012 if if somebody would have told me that uh, you could use something like a glucose monitor to see all these things i would have said no chance so post so i'm i'm sure after 10 years again somebody will come and tell you right. we have come with something where you just need to put it and you will just get some sensor on and then you will automatically sleep i'm sure something will will definitely come in those lines because at the yeah. end of the day sleep is the most important thing for anybody out there and if if that's done and i think 70% of the work is already done so we just need to focus on the rest 30 and uh, so i am i am expecting that kind of a sensor to come where you just put it on and then you sleep <laughs> not very far away <laughs> <laughs> not very far away i i already sleep on one of those beds uh, <laughs> it's 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 still you can say 50% there but uh, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah nice. but i think i think this is a nice addition to the platform potentially please send uh, it to me the first please uh, first piece please send it to me <laughs> <laughs> 100% but you will see an announcement in the next 11 days as well so oh nice something, okay something cool coming interesting. out interesting interesting of course yeah. you have the first tips on it another technical question for you so when you look at badminton as a sport across all other sports so what are some of the unique training challenges for badminton like how do you train differently for yourself and let's say compared to any other sport what are some of the aspects that you uh, watch compared to let's say soccer football or maybe like uh, cricket etc i mean these are totally different sports but do you practice some other aspects like balance or hand speed etc differently compared to other sports uh it's i think it's a totally skillful sport but i think racket sports are a totally different set of sport where you need a lot of skill and but i think badminton is one sport which 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 i feel is a uh, very fast very quick you just need everything out there in your body to react at the same time and i mean like soccer or some other sport where you just need your legs for i think for badminton you need legs hands and you just need that extra power endurance um, i think it's very fast endurance you'll have to sustain one one and a half hour of really long pace rally so it's a game which is where uh, you have a lot of aspects uh, to be taken care of even a small pain in your toe can really stop you from training on a particular day so right. i think uh, uh, when you when you look in say that perspective it is a really tough sport to really continue playing i mean every day to to really consistently train is one it's one very demanding one sport yeah very demanding sport on those as lines where the intensity is way too high and uh, to really back off from certain injuries are tough because you feel it might be a niggle but the niggle can get into a pain very very quickly in just one right. session of badminton you can just get into a pain and then you're out for probably a week or 10 days so that is the most challenging part with this game because i've experienced quite a lot of injuries in the past one decade and fair i think i don't remember not having an injury in any part of my body i think i have faced every part had some kind of issue so that is why i always feel that it's a very complex game not just skill wise you need to be uh, up there but physically you will have to really really manage your body you will have to understand what your body is i think that understanding takes good 5 to 6 years in the professional yeah. side and once you understand that then it's a little bit more easy and i'm glad that i got a lot of injuries in my initial part of my career when i was 20 21 uh, until 25 i had a lot of injuries but now i feel i think that's that's something which which was blessing in disguise because now i know exactly what my body is and now whenever something 
off goes with my body i kind of know it and i'm ready to just back off from the training for one two days and then then give my body the time to recover because i understood that recovery is one thing which which we really don't focus on i think in india as such i think even when it comes to sports science we are way behind in the recovery side when you look at the other countries especially as europe or when you say when you compare it with the professional uh, football players i think the recovery is just uh, yeah. taken care of so well and that's why they are able to play that many matches that many that many football games at that that intensity uh, and uh, for the full long year without much injury so i think that i think it comes down to only recovery side so that's what i have realized with the sport and uh, it just the battle with your body that is the first battle which you'll have to win somehow and then the rest i think it's much more easier to manage if you if you eventually now understand what your body is made of and just keep doing stuff which actually makes it or which which actually makes your body in a good condition before the tournament after the tournament and uh, all those small small say recovery sessions like a pool session uh, like a steam sauna i think these things matter a big time uh, when it comes to badminton so there is a lot happening in that space as well like yeah yeah the and this is our sort of like wish list as well we want to bring Let's say things like cryotherapy to India, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, hyperbaric oxygen, all those type of mechanisms. Because yes, for somebody who just wants to get a little bit fit uh, from um, their lifestyle, sedentary lifestyle, yeah. uh, that might not be a requirement. But then, like uh, for an athlete, the extra point one percent or one percent that it generates for you. You will have to give that shot for that one person, unless and until yeah. you try something, you don't you you won't improve that one person. I think it's as clear. And especially coming to athletics, I would say, hundred yeah. meters, two hundred meters, four hundred meters, just one second, half of a second. If you yeah. don't do all these things, you won't get that half second. I think it's as clear as that, and uh, yeah. that's where we probably we need to get things in place much more organized. I would say. uh in the next few years 5 6 years where everything is accessible at one center and you don't have yeah. to take a flight to go and take a cryotherapy right so yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. i hope in the next one decade we'll have a lot of things in place where at least the high level or say the top level athletes are able to do it on an everyday basis and i think that will make i think that will get big differences in the number of olympic medals we which we which we eventually get to our country I think not ten years. Certainly three years from now. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully, if you tell ten, yeah. then yeah, maybe probably five to six years. I'm, 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 I'm yeah. at least thinking probably five to six years. Yeah. This is definitely going to be a huge. I mean, we are totally inspired by what and and the background is that I think generally Indian athletes have so much of mental, is you can say toughness compared to most other athletes. Yeah. Out. I mean, yeah. Yeah. yes. Wherever there is lack of resources and. when people actually win because of their mental toughness of course probably like that's our superpower but i think if we marry it with other superpowers right like uh, i think cold exposure uh, hyperbaric oxygen uh, infrared therapy bunch of like hundreds of these things right i think it just all compounds along with obviously the ability to test your own data to understand what works for you so all of that is wip i think very very soon uh, we should be able to unlock a lot uh, more together yeah yeah but, yeah hopefully uh, yeah but with all of that like i think uh, moving on to maybe the last section of the podcast one uh, question that i think most of our listeners would have that for young aspirants what would be like the top 3 advice oh, um shit. for getting into badminton <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i mean from your perspective uh, i hate giving advice <laughs> but still yeah i think uh, not not advice as such but i think this is my experience being yeah. in the circuit for mm-hmm. last 10 15 years and coming from a place where we didn't have much of support as such and i would say the first uh, first thing would be to i think especially for the kids who are playing the sport when when you are 10 to 12 12 to 15 i think it's really important that you play all the sport i think this advice is for the parents as such also where you don't i mean my this is my request saying that you don't get your kid to one particular sport at a very yeah. young age and let them sure. train only that and i mm-hmm. think it's really important that they 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 experience every single sport out there and give it a try 
just for fun but it's very important that you play a cricket a football a squash everything out there so that they know what it is and that will eventually give a lot of coordination and a lot of balancing i think all these kind of things will eventually come if you play a lot of sport and uh, right. that will eventually help when you are Uh, probably 2021 and and one more thing which i have realized is these days is a lot of competition right yeah, uh, yeah. starting from the age 10 there is competition and, and uh, kids are being thrown at that kind of a stage where say from the day one you are having a competition and by the time you are 22 23 then you are drained out and you don't have more energy to really try something new or to probably stick to the sport which you which you actually love and eventually 23 24 you are drained out so i feel it's i think it's okay still it's okay if you kid doesn't really make it big in the initial first four years but post that it's still okay to push somebody from say 16 17 because they lo- their their best will eventually come when they are 26 27 only this is this, this is right. my experience there might be few of them who will really say farewell uh, when they are 20 21 but i think when you see men i think say say mental happiness side also it's a very very important uh, thing out there where you just can't allow somebody to drain out by 22 23 and then you don't know what to do in your life and uh, then you're just stuck don't peak too early essentially yeah. yeah don't peak too early i mean you just you, you, you just need to be there you just need to keep working but not really in a way saying that you are drained out so i think that is one right. thing which i've seen over the years and i feel we just need to f- loosen things a little bit more so that they have a little bit more freedom and play and i think that is the only thing and not a thing otherwise advice wise i would say just need to be gutsy enough to try everything out there there might be few things which which might help you there might be few things which might not help you but unless and until you keep trying different and new stuff you will never come to know about that and uh, i've i've seen a lot of them sticking to particular things in their life since last 10 years and probably it has given a lot of good results to them but from here what next the next is to try something new and and to always explore the options available to you and to see how better you can get from these kind of opportunities where i've seen a lot of them backing off saying that i mean we are good with what we are doing right now we don't want to try something new and and you are left behind because somebody else who is going to try those new things they are going to really go ahead so right just need to try mm-hmm. everything out there unless and until you experience those you'll not figure out what's good for you what's not good for you so just go out there explore everything out there and then decide okay this is what one thing which 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 actually helps me and then probably this is what i need to keep doing so yeah no i think this is not just for badminton i think this is phenomenal <laughs> advice for life i think the my favorite one out of this list is even if you are 16 17 uh, it, don't take too much pressure too early right i mean yeah yeah uh, it's uh, it's not the end of the world right i mean yeah. uh, so many of them makes you feel that see this is the end of the world and uh, but eventually this is not the end of the world you have a lot of things which which will come in but you just need to hang in there you just need to enjoy what you are doing i think that's really important because i've i've i had lost interest in between because of this much of competition i i, I remember i've i've had lost interest at told home um, say i don't want to play badminton anymore and so there have been days like that seasons like that where you don't enjoy what you're doing you don't enjoy the practice sessions that's the most important thing when you're not enjoying that practice session then it's done and dusted and yeah. uh, but now in the last 2 3 years i have somehow started really loving those pra- say practice sessions and i think that makes huge difference and uh, to really get that feeling you just need to be a little bit more free and just can't be just cramped up saying that see this is the end of your life if you don't perform well in this tournament it just finished i mean these kind of things keeps happening but it's very important that you keep say enjoy what you're doing and then i think things will fall in place automatically i think this is phenomenal advice and i would love to quote one of my favorite athletes of all time who is that marcelo garcia uh, phenomenal okay. wrestler saying that uh, so if, when people asked him that oh are you the best wrestler of all time I said no 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 I'm not the best one but uh, I have the most love for the sport. Uh, yeah exactly. <laughs> I think I see I also like 
to follow players who who really love what they're doing and especially when you see Federer and Messi they love to play when they are in the ground and uh, you just feel that happiness when they when they when they get the ball they are happy to get that ball and uh, they are not really kind of worried what's next and uh, yeah. i think that makes it really beautiful to watch them play i mean these kind of players where they just they are in love with the sport and that just comes automatically to the viewers also so yeah very cool this is so inspiring on that note i'd love to conclude the podcast but uh, before that i'd love to ask you what's the next big thing for you uh, it could be anything <laughs> i'm putting so, yeah. on the spot so yeah. <laughs> yeah there are a few things which are which are lined up but uh, f- as as an individual i have stopped keeping targets mm-hmm. stopped keeping aims in my life sorry this advice is not say any youngsters you need to have aims you need to have <laughs> targets in your life but unfortunately that never worked for me and uh, so in the last few years i have i have have always thought about the next day only i have i've never thought uh, next month what's what's happening next month or after two years what am i going to do i'm i'm i never been thinking all those things so the only thing is how how better i can play the next day practice session or I think that is the only thing which comes into my mind. So, but uh, I keep small targets. Like obviously, uh, we have World Championships coming uh, in the August uh, as a professional. Uh, in in the professional side, that is one thing which on a short term goal. Yes, that is one thing which I am looking forward to. But yes, twenty twenty four Paris is uh, a dream. Uh, it's still a dream. I've never played an Olympics, so. Mm-hmm. yes i would be really trying to get that spot next year and i think next year is going to be a marathon of tournaments where olympic qualification starts and a lot of things are going to be very tricky uh, when it comes to an olympic qualification so yeah that is one thing which i'm really looking forward to because i think it's going to be fun i don't want to take any pressure as such because i know that this is something which i'll have to enjoy if it doesn't come it doesn't come and but you just need to enjoy that process and uh, i would really love myself to be in paris after two years <laughs> oh super excited for that and super excited for you and with that i think uh, we're almost at the end of the podcast but uh, i guess of course it's such it's been such a pleasure to have you on the podcast again and uh, thank you mohit thank you of course um, nice questions though so yeah <laughs> <laughs> i love putting you on the spot yeah. <laughs> and yeah, i love your advice be... as well i love <laughs> your advice even though you keep claiming that this is not for people should follow but this is phenomenal and uh, of course we'll we'll catch up again and we will uh, we'll, we'll surely catch up in bangalore and all the best with everything and thank you thank you all right yes yes okay. thank you thank you so thank much thank you hs yeah Thank you. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the chat as much as I did. HS's journey to winning the Thomas Cup was full of ups and downs, but his grit and determination to make it to the top made him the champion he is today. As Indians, we are massively proud of HS's achievements are with him as he gears up for the Olympics. If you're listening to the episode on Apple Podcast or Spotify, please rate us and review the Ultra Human podcast. We are keen to know your thoughts on what we are doing here and how we can bring more interesting topics to you. Also please don't forget to share this episode with folks around you so that they too can be inspired by Achish Pranay's life journey. See you all with the new episode next week.